Hi, I'm Craig Cushman with Airmar. I'm here with Joe Natalino, and Joe's the project manager for the TDT-1000, the transducer diagnostic tester. And he's going to tell us all about how to interpret results, and maybe a little bit of troubleshooting. So, Joe, TDT-1000 solves so many problems about diagnosing uh, issues that may be related to transducers or not. It's, it's really how you know. But tell us about the environment in which you test. What's the best way to test on a boat utilizing the TDT-1000? Yeah, so ideally the transducer is going to be mounted in the boat, boats in the water, and you've got a real, you know, real world environment. Uh, if that's not possible, we've had a lot of customers hang transducers over the edge of the water, mm -hmm. completely wet in that face, you're down, you're looking in deep water. Um, if neither of those scenarios are available, um, you're going to want to utilize this Airmar TDT test block. Uh, this simulates kind of a, a, a mounted environment for the user. So ideally, again, you're in the water, in the boat, or using the, uh, the Airmar test block. And the test block's great um, if you've got a, a boat that's in dry dock and, and you get called to the boat, you can actually wet the yeah. face of that and hold it up against the transducer. And, and that's right? one of the reasons we, uh, we developed it actually is mm -hmm. because a lot of our customers, they get called out, test these things, boats out of the water, um, and the only way to really test it is either pull it out or to use a test block like this. And this is a great, great thing. You walk right up, like you said, hold it on the face of that transducer mm -hmm. and you can run through all the tests using sensor check. That's great, that's great. So let's talk about connecting your TDT to the transducers. There's a couple of different ways to do that. It's important to know. Can you walk us through connector cables and, and breakout box a bit? Sh sure, so uh, you know all of the Airmar um, uh, transducers are gonna have either a, a molded connector on one end or there's gonna be flying leads. So for all of our transducers with molded connectors, we offer adapter cables. And you can see here, all of our adapter cables have this yellow band on them that connects into the TDT-1000. And that's a must have, right? You've got to have a connector cable. Every time you use the TDT-1000, you have to have a cable connected to it. No transducer is going to plug directly into the TDT-1000, always using an adapter cable. Great. And then for, um, for transducers with flying leads, we have a, a breakout box here. So this allows you to kind of plug in the wires that you have available. It's color coded. There's some uh, signal d explanations on the back here. Pretty straightforward. And that's kind of the, the catch all for everything else that doesn't have an Airmar connector on it. Okay, so we want to start our test. We've got our TDT connected to a transducer. We've got our sensor check app ready to go. What's the first thing that's going to happen on this? So the great part about sensor check, the TDT-1000 and XID is that they all work together. So you've got the unit all plugged in, it starts a test, it's going to go out and look for XID right away on that transducer. Mm -hmm. If it finds XID, it's going to use the Airmar database, you're connected over the internet, it's going to grab actual factory data, serial number data for the unit that you're testing, mm -hmm. and then you'll be able to compare those results right to how it left the factory. So no better data to test against. Um, in in uh, transducer ID, it also stores the performance of that transducer as well. I talked about heat, um, highest heat and things like that. Yeah, so XID, for those that aren't familiar with it, it's going to provide you, you know, serial number, date of manufacture. We store, uh, for certain transducers, we store the max temperature the ceramics ever got to, which is a great debug tool. Uh, all that data is available on sensor check. Great. Great. Okay, so let's say it's an older transducer that doesn't have uh, transducer ID. Um, what, what's, how do you use the, so, the screen on that? So for transducers without XID, it could be an older unit, it could be a non-chirp unit. Um, sensor Tech's going to start that test and it's immediately not going to find XID and it's going to bring you to a screen where you can enter in the OEM, the OEM part number, Airmar part number, the model number and there's a, a database or a cross-reference there that's going to slowly narrow you down to the unit that you're looking to test. Mm -hmm. Maybe you know this is a B164, maybe you know the part number of this unit, you're going to enter that in. It's going to use the data stored locally on your device and it's going to load all the test parameters and the catalog test results and it'll start the test for you from there. Okay, so what if it's a transducer not made by Airmar and you want to use the TDT? Can you do that? Uh, you can. So we thought ahead, there's a, there's a couple real common frequencies uh, combinations out there. So we've got, if you don't know the part number, you don't know the model number, but you happen to know that it's a 5200, mm -hmm. you know, we've got a button for that. It tests using some pretty standard data. Um, if it's not an Airmar part number and it's not in our database, 
um, and you can use this breakout cable, uh, breakout box, you can actually run, you know, tests using, you know, a set start, start and stop frequency, mm -hmm. and you can kind of just do a frequency scan to see what it looks like. That's more for an advanced user, but the possibility and the, the capability is built into sensor check. Okay, great. So now we start the test utilizing sensor check app. Tell us what's happening on that on that um, that chart. So. Uh, the TDT-1000 is an impedance analyzer. So we're looking um, for basically an impedance curve across a set frequency band. If that's a conventional transducer, we're looking for that, that resonant point, that lowest... Um, that lowest um, inflection in, point? It's an inflection point, where the, mm -hmm. the lowest point in that curve. We want that to fall inside um, a set range of frequency and impedance. For chirp transducers, we're looking, obviously, across a much broader range. These are more broadband type transducers. So we're looking for a response, an impedance response across a frequency range. Okay. So you're gonna, you know, a plot's gonna come up on the screen. You're gonna see uh, factory data or, or serial number data, and then you're gonna see the data of the unit that you're actually testing. Okay, now they might not match identically, correct? And, and why, why might that be? Well, you got to remember, we, you know, we use a lot of sophisticated equipment in the lab in a very controlled environment to take all of the factory data or the serial number data. Um, when you're out in the field, there's a lot of other factors, whether it's environment, whether you're on the test block, whether you're in the water. So um, in general, you know, the response curves that you get with the TDT should closely match, you know, mm -hmm. if everything's working well, but you will see some variation, you know, basically almost noise. In, okay. in, the, in the curve, but as long as you're as long as you're following along with that line, it'll give you that that in range or out of range. Correct, and you know we've got some we've got the software knows if it falls within range or out of range, it's going to report report that back to you. Okay, great. Uh, chirp versus non chirp transducers. I know we can test both. It's part of the the advantage of it. How is that going to show differently? On the sensor check app, so it's a it's a, a, a smaller difference, and we touched on it a little bit. You're going to see either uh, for chirp transducers, you're looking for a response across a range, so you have mm -hmm. kind of a uh, a high and a low impedance limit across a set frequency range. As long as we stay, you know, mainly inside that curve mm -hmm. um, or inside that range, it, it's a pass. For more conventional transducers, single frequency transducers, you're looking for that inflection point. You're looking for that resonant point to be within a very narrow frequency range. And yeah. so it's a, it's a minor difference, but the curves are going to look a little bit different when you run them through on sensor check. Okay, great. So let's say you've run your test, you've gotten your result. If I've got a, a, a um, in-range result, what can I do with that data? So uh, sensor check allows you to share that data. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've got a share button on there. You can send that data out via email, via uh, text message. You can save it to like an FTP site. Um, it basically does a screen capture, an image capture of all the screens you see on sensor check uh, and allows you to email that right out. So you can yep. email that to the boat owner, to yep. back to your factory, email it to Airmar. Uh, we can take a look at the data and help you interpret it. Sure. And, and, and if you had something that was out of range, that'd be real helpful, right, to, to send that data to our customer service representative. It's always great to get a second set of eyes on the, on the results. Those can be sent to certified at airmar.com, yep. um, and we can help you take a look at it. We've got technicians that are available to, um, to review that data with you. Yeah, it's a great way to, to avoid a costly uh, quote-unquote repair when ultimately it may not have, uh, the repair may not have fixed anything. So Correct. So that can save you a lot of time. That, that, that's a great feature. Talk about storing the test history. Why is that maybe important to a to an installer? So every time the uh, a test comes up, mm -hmm. it's going to have a kind of a defaulted te uh, file name with a with a date code. But you can change that, um, and then all those results are stored inside of Sensor Check. Mm -hmm. So at any point, you could go back and search for results uh, for a certain boat or for a certain model number or that uh, happened on a certain date. Uh, it basically becomes a test record for the technician out in the field of what tests they've completed. Um, you know, maybe looking for some history, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a boat owner might call up, you can always go back, pull that data that you took one, two, th six months ago. So we're storing that here at Airmar, and the device is also storing that. Correct. All the data is uploaded to our database at the mm -hmm. completion of a test. Um, that, again, allows our technicians to look for patterns, allows mm -hmm. our technicians to help debug any problems they might see in the field. All right, so Joe, let, let, let's say I've run my test, I'm getting an out-of-range test. Why might that happen? I mean, explain to us all of the things that might contribute to an out of range, if you could. So the first thing we tell people, if you get an out of range result, does it make sense? Does it follow the complaint that you're getting? Hey, we, you know, we're getting poor depth performance on the 50 kilohertz side. 
if I test it on sensor check and we're seeing a, a, an error, a failure or an out of range on the 50 kilohertz, well, that makes sense. But if the customer is not complaining about anything, but we're still seeing you know poor results, um, we have some troubleshooting steps that we like you to go through. First, do you have the right cable? Um, we use a lot of the same connectors across different products, different different manufacturers. Uh, a lot of the connectors look very similar. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing we ask you, make sure you got that right cable. If you're using the breakout box, confirm that you got everything plugged in right and you're getting good connectivity. Um, second thing why you might be seeing a failure is we are, um, you know, there could be physical damage. Mm -hmm. There could be overheating. Um, again, chirp transducers, we monitor that temperature. Yeah, so that's something to pay attention to yep. there is the On all of our chirp, max temp. Correct. All of our chirp transducers are going to display that max mm -hmm. temp the ceramic ever got to. Mm -hmm. And um, um, that'll turn red if it starts getting into a range that you should be concerned about. And that's something that you definitely want to um, talk to an airmark technician about. Um, a lot of times we see people will, will run the sounders with the boat out of the water and the transducers, you know, that face of the transducer is meant to be in the water and it, right. when it's not, that temperature can start rising pretty fast. Gotcha. Um, other things that might cause a failure is, you know, the age of the transducer. Mm -hmm. uh, again, with XID, we record that manufacture date. So uh, you might find out that this transducer is kind of working marginally after 10 or 15 years. It may just have reached the end of its life and it's time to, uh, time to swap it out. So if I get a fail, um, I may want to try that test again and just alter that, that environment a little bit, right? Correct. There'll be some obvious things like temp and damage and mm -hmm. things like that, but if it's not so obvious, maybe I want to vary the test that I'm doing as well. That, would right, that help? So, so in the test environment, sometimes we tell people when you're testing you know, boats in the water, but you're in a marina with maybe a, a, you know, a concrete bottom, Let's try that test, you know, out in some deeper water. Right. Um, maybe away from more of the electrical environment that you might see in a typical marina. If you're testing on the test block, you know, do you have enough water wetting that face? Mm -hmm. uh, have you tried testing it two or three times? Are you getting consistent results? It's good information to share with a technician when you, when you get on the phone with them and and try and troubleshoot exactly with the the, the Airmark customer service folks. So Joe, the TDT 1000 connects via Bluetooth to your iOS device or your Android device that's running sensor check app. Um, any issues that we've seen with connection that maybe technicians should know about? Sure, so um, you know, there's two different types of Bluetooth connection. You have a pairing device where you actually would pair to maybe a speaker or to your car, mm -hmm. and it creates kind of a dedicated connection. So sensor check and the TDT-1000 use what's called BLE, or Bluetooth Low Energy. So it really only creates a communication channel back and forth when it needs it. So it's not gonna pair like a typical de Bluetooth device that you uh, may be used to. So some of the, um, the issues that we've run into are that people actually need to go in and do a search. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a tool inside sensor check. You can search for uh, any available TDTs in range and then it will connect to a single TDT. So a single iOS or Android device will connect to a single TDT. Gotcha. And it's gonna connect to the TDT that's the closest in range. So if you're in a shop where you're yeah. running multiple TDTs, there's a chance that you could connect to the wrong TDT. We have a, we have a special um, uh, software sequence. There's a button in there that allows you to kind of identify which TDT you're connected to. Okay. Um, so that's one thing we've run into. Um, the other thing is sometimes if you have a certain device, maybe you've connected to a TDT with your iPhone, and now you want to hand it to maybe one of your other technicians that has a, a different iPad, they're going to have to step through kind of that whole um, acquisition you know, connection cycle again. Uh, once you're connected, the TDT and sensor check are going to want to connect to those same two devices every time. Okay. That'll be kind of the default configuration. So for most users, that's how it's going to come up every time for them. All right, so that's really a concern for shops that have multiple installers and multiple TDTs. Multiple TDTs, or even sometimes if you switch devices or it's the first time you're using it. Right. Thanks, Joe. The TDT-1000 from Airmars, the perfect diagnostic tool for every electronics installer.